recently Pan South American champion, and he's a bit unknown to everyone in the karate world. Yeah, a bit unknown in Australia, but in places like Brazil, outside of Australia, you know, Kyokushin in some places is really big, and uh, we don't actually realise an awesome uh, attempt yeah. there, an axe kick. It's a big knee there. Of course, you can kick as hard as you want and knee as hard as you want to the head. It's just the boxing. They just try to switch it up so we can see a bit of a difference between uh, kickboxing and tie boxing and kill the shin. Almost got him with a head kick. Want to keep those hands up, Daniel? Yeah, Pete, how, how does it make such a big difference in, in the fight and with no punching to the head? Well, it makes you hit a lot harder and you can stand a little closer to them. You can see the levels. They're much closer to each other than a boxer or a kickboxer. They don't normally stand that close to each other. There's a lot of work to do then, head kicks. Yeah, you've got to be quick. You've got to try. What I always try to do is get them to bring their hands down, smash them in the legs, get them in the body, and then switch it up, just like Daniel did there. That's favourite technique of Daniel Triffis, uh, the axe kick. Yeah, he'll, I tell you, he'll stand in front of you and punch and kick until you just give up. Yeah, right. And then off. he'll throw that axe kick. He, will. He, he just has a style. He hangs in there, doesn't he? He uh, won't give up. No, you'll find that of a lot of Kyokushin guys. It's it's a real fundamental part of Kyokushin is go forward, don't give up, and uh, keep push, 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 push. Real tough guy way of winning fights. Yeah, that's Daniel's style. Go forward and keep punching and hitting all the way. Raphael being for a torrid minute left here. You see uh, Raphael's got all those different techniques he likes to throw. Inside low kick, then outside uh, axe kick moves it around. Daniel keeping it pretty simple, just smashing their legs, trying not to let him uh, bring those legs up any higher. Crowd are behind Daniel. Fantastic oh, atmosphere here. Fantastic. It's good to see so many people come out to watch a Kyokushin tournament. Hasn't yeah. been something this big for a long time. Is the most common injury broken ribs? Oh, I think the most common injury is cork thigh. <laughs> the Kyokushin shuffle. Pretty yeah. common after a tournament. Daniel has all his students here. He has a dojo locally here in uh, Woolloomooloo and Paddington. So they're all here today cheering him on. Just pushing forward. You see that push a little bit and smash the legs. Smash the legs. You see half hours not getting those kicks up high anymore. He's, he's probably a little bit sore, a little bit tender. Yeah, Daniel's been hammering him around the stomach area and liver. And low kicks for taking their toll on Raphael. There's time. Who do you like, boys? I think Daniel won that one. He was uh, more effective, pushing back. And of course, in Kyokushin, they want to see that. They want to see who's pushing who back. That looks like an ikiwaki to me. That means it's a draw. They'll probably give him another round. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Raphael put up a good show there. This guy back in. So there's no break load boxing or kickboxing. As soon as they give that decision, boom, they're straight back into it. So you don't get a break, you don't get a drink of water, you don't get a pat on the back and all the other things that go with uh, boxing, kickboxing, mixed martial arts. Have the decision, straight back on it. Bear in mind, Raphael's 24 years old. He's a lot younger than Daniel and yeah, Daniel's certainly given him a go. Bit of a spring chicken. Daniel certainly lacks nothing in self-belief. Well, he should have the confidence. He's done this for a long time. He's been effective and he's been good and he knows how to win. So he kick. Ooh. Yeah, Daniel lives and breathes this. He really does. I mean, if Daniel was a kickboxer, he'd be a world champion. That's how good he is. But he's always stuck to the traditional martial arts and he's always done it for the love of it. And uh, what a guy for doing it. Takes a lot of kids' classes. Good person. You're listening to expert comments from Pete Graham, world kickboxing champion. Also with us, Mark Murphy, himself a uh, fine karate exponent and uh, organiser of this tremendous event in Sydney today that you are watching exclusively on Fuel. Just saw then Garcia, knee to the head. Mm. Oh, big low kick. Now they're really going to pick it up. They don't want to go a third, uh, sorry, a second extension. They just take too much out of you. I mean, it's like going three three-minute rounds without a break. Is it? Punches are hard. Then he's thrown in there, Raphael. He really digs deep, sets his ground. Listen to the crowd. Coming off like a frog in a sock, mate. <laughs> if this doesn't lift, Daniel, nothing will. Oh, yeah. No, this Daniel, is it. Daniel's been at home. Full credit the Brazilian, though. He's hanging in. 
Oh, he wants to win it. It's a long way from Brazil. He doesn't want to come just for a holiday. Oh, oh. Axe kicking a roll kick right at the end. He was giving it everything. Latter stages. Raphael. Those more dynamic kicks, they are better to throw at the end of the round when the other guy's tired. Might not think you have any more uh, left in you, so I like to throw that roll kick at the end of my bouts. Oh, they're giving it to Daniel. That's good. Well, that's a popular result. Certainly a popular result, but he deserves it. That was a win. We'll hear from him shortly. He looks a bit spent, I've got to say. I would be too, by the way. That was a tough bout. Yeah, Raphael and Daniel really went toe to toe in five minutes, so yeah, I can understand that, Burnett taking that in. Being able to finish these bouts nice and early takes an effect on you uh, in those later, later bouts in the, uh, in the day. So, you know, this will tell how much injuries he has from this in the later bouts. Looking at the replay, the Australian and the Brazilian. Blow for blow, isn't it? They just stand in front of each other. Rafael's bringing that knee up. There it is again, not really effective. That one got him. Daniel got him. Let's go down to Rick now, who's standing by to talk with the Aussie. Uh, well, it's, uh, thank you very much for everyone. Thank everyone for supporting. Uh, it's a brilliant to fight on the home turf for the first time. Thank you very much. Uh, this win will mean nothing if the next fight is not. So I'm not going to celebrate this. Just going to go get some water and then get ready for the next one. Thank you. Good on you, Daniel. Daniel Triffle. Arguably the most popular winner of the day. And I reckon Daniel will be a little relieved too. He would have been feeling the pressure coming into that bout. He knows he's the people's favourite. Now the semi-finals action. Zolt Below and Roman Nestorenko will face off. And then in the second semi, Daniel will face Lucas Kabilius. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And now's the time for the tough to get going. They're playing for keep semi-final time. Recapping Roman Nestorenko's profile. The reigning world champion, Mark. Yeah, Roman's a, a tough guy. He um, trains very hard and, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll give Zolt a run for his money here for sure. Zolt was impressive in his opening bout. 22 years of age. Let's go down to Rick for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived. Our first semi-final event of the evening is about to take place. We're getting down to the business end of our event this evening. Let's welcome back, winning over in the early bout, please bring back Zot Bobo. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Second this year in the 2011 European Championships, he's back in our first city final. Zolt looks like he's ready to go, doesn't he? He wants to win this. You can tell that he's come out and he's, he's confident, he's relaxed, bopping around at the music there. It's not normally what happens in Chilkshin tournaments. No music. This is a bit more professional. These guys fighting for money as well as honor. He's really going to think about it. I think that money will go a long way in Hungary. I guess he'd want to go back with that, maybe take a bit of time off. The Russian will be introduced in a moment. Mark, you've got some sponsors you'd like to thank. Yeah, David, I'd like to thank uh, Ash and Scaffolden for being a major sponsor and SumFEU. And of course, Download Contract and Acro and Australian Access High. Thank you. Okay, Rick Powell standing by to introduce the world's best. Here he is now. Let's welcome back. Hot up his winner from Yoshinori Nakano from Russia. The All Russian Tournament Champion in 2010. Please welcome Roman Nestorenko. Here's the 31 year old. Uh, would be buoyed by the fact that he obviously has advanced to the semi-finals. Being the world's best, there's an element of pressure that goes with that too, Pete. He's a, you know, when you're on top, everyone wants to knock you off. But, I mean, he looks confident as hell. Have a look at him. He, he wants to go out there. He wants to win it. You know, he's got the ACT, ACDC pumping in the background. I mean, he's pumped up. Have a look at him. He's relaxed. He's good. He's confident. He's a world champion for a bloody good reason. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Stick, stick around on our, our coverage of the Full Contact Karate World Challenge later on today's program, you're going to see an ice-breaking demonstration that has to be seen to be believed. 
Oh, ice breaking. I've seen some guys really damage themselves trying to do that. Break their arms and legs trying. Look at that. Zoltz comes straight in. Hungarian you know, left hand side of screen. They're really going to have to work. Oh, oh, look at that. Straight in with that Jordan Two head kicks. No love lost between these two countries. Jolt's strategy has just simply got to be attack. Jolt's just going forward here and trying to get as many hits in as he can. Well, Zolt needs to slow up the, um, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Roman's low kicks uh, by stopping him with low kicks so he can't get those head kicks up there, which is going to be a super effective way to stop him. If he doesn't do that early, he's going to leave himself open to getting kicked in the head all day. See how quick that last uh, kick the stomach was there by Roman. He's just so quick like a cat. They're both quick. They're both good. They're both here for a good reason. You see Roman's low kicks though. He's just kicking that little bit harder and it just really you can see the effect it's taking. Looking for those kicks. Looking for those low kicks. There's a big thing of Kyokushin kicking the legs. It's a trademark. Isn't it, Peter? It really is. A little bit slow to begin with. Yeah, Jolt's filling him out there now. Keeps on switching his styles. I don't see that so much in, in boxing, in kickboxing, in Thai boxing. But Kyokushin fighters will really change their style from orthodox to southpaw a lot more than any other, uh, a lot of other styles will. Roman's really big on that, if you notice how he's switching... Switching his sides there. The Hungarian second in the European Championship this year. So he's enjoyed a good campaign ahead of this tournament. Yeah, this tournament we have in Sydney is a good uh, prelude for Roman for his preparation for world tournament in Tokyo in October. So good prep for him. Great prep for him. It looks like he's really picking his shots here. Oh, uh, that's a big hard hit. Yeah, that'll hurt tomorrow. <laughs> oh, big knee there. You don't oh. want to waste energy by pushing those guys off. It's a bit of an amateur thing to do that. You, if you're going to hit them, you might as well hit them. Don't just shove them off. It takes a lot of energy. It's pretty mm -hmm. even right now. They don't want to go another, another round of this. Not so close to the finals. Well, someone's got to put it on someone. Only 20 seconds ago. Roman's doing it now. Yeah, he's really starting to pick it up with that knees. With his work right now. Yeah, much more. Here we go. That's it. That's going to work well for him. Good timing as well. He, he relaxed right up until the end there. Knew where he was and pushed out right to that end. Oh, yo. How hard was that? You could hear it. You can see how focused Roman is. They, they're whistling and yelling to stop it. He's not listening to it. He's not intentionally trying to break the rules. He's just so focused to get that job done. I think he might have done just enough to get that without having to go another round. We'll see what the judges think. I think you're right, Peter. He seemed to get on top towards the end, didn't he? Yeah, good strategy there. You know, didn't really do so much to begin with. A little bit slow in the middle. Finished up nice and strong. The referees went, looks like he's winning the bout and gave it to him. Normally the last 30 seconds of the fight, they put the pressure on. Roman kept it right at the last 20 seconds, so conserving his energy for more fights. All right, we'll now go back downstairs uh, to Rick Powell. He's going to try his best in the finals for all you guys. He's going to put all of his strength and power into it and see how it goes. Great performance by the Russian. Roman Nestorinko and by virtue of winning that semi-final will of course now advance to the final and the next bout will see the Australian Daniel Trifu 37 years of age he's going to face the Lithuanian Lucas Kabilius and we look forward to this fight with no little expectation Pete well we really want Daniel to do well here it's going to be a tough call though uh, you know Lucas really knows what he's doing I mean I really want Daniel to win but it's going to be a hard walk. It certainly is. Let's go down to Rick Powell for the introduction of the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, now taking to our second semi-final of the evening. We saw him win the third round against Samuel Kovacs. It's not time to welcome back from Lithuania, Lucas Kulinas. 
Here comes the 28-year-old. He was very impressive in his opening fight. He'd be buoyed in the confidence department as a result of that, and he'll need to be at his absolute best here because the emotion, a tidal wave of emotion, will surround his Australian opponent. Oh, this is going to be huge for Daniel. He really is a sentimental favourite. We all want him to win. We all want him to do well. Lithuania, though, they produce a lot of good Kilkshin champions. And uh, uh, Lucas, of course, he really is the cream of the crop. Such a spoiler, too, isn't he? He's a big man. He is a big man. I tell you, he's bigger than me. He's uh, quite thick set. You meet him, very quiet. You know, he's a. Uh, you know, he, he's got that big, dark look in his eye. He wants to, you know, really go hard at you. That's You're it. cracking jokes. No one's bigger than you, Pete Graham. At this <laughs> juncture, let's go back down to Rick to introduce the Aussie. And here is, ladies and gentlemen, our very own Daniel Trifo. Right, just listen to the crowd. I mean, I'm excited for this one. This is going to be huge. Look at Daniel. He knows the pressure. This is just like a final for him. Shake of the hands. He's all pumped, Daniel. Yeah, you wipe your hands on your key. It's, you see a lot of guys do it. You know, he knows how important this is. Yeah, he's there to win. He's not there just to be a part of it. He wants to win this. And put a lot of work into it. And Lucas wants to spoil all his fun, doesn't he? He sure <laughs> does. He's a big Luther, won't you? Look at that. He's psyched. This is the bout that I've been waiting for. This here now is going to be a very interesting bout. I really hope Daniel does well. But like I said before, Lucas, massive spoiler. Tough to win against him. He's on usual opening style there. Very unusual. It throws you off when guys start doing stuff like that. You're not quite sure what they're trying to do, but he's there for a good reason. He's got a heel kick in there on Daniel. Very unorthodox, isn't it? Yes, it is. Daniel doesn't appear to use up any unnecessary energy. No, he's a, Daniel's a smart fighter. He knows what it takes to win. He's, he's not a young guy just trying to go, you know, flat stick. He's very technical, looking for those shots. Smart way to win against a bigger opponent. Lucas found quite a few of these heel kicks in on Daniel's left knee. And the elbow. See the elbow to the top of the chest? He's a jetty, yes. That would have hurt. The crowd are into this. That unorthodox style really getting Daniel uh, to make a few mistakes. They should have walked out of the way there. Lucas, his trademark hitting the liver there hard. Wow, Lucas is just really powering through this, isn't he? He's hurting, Daniel. I didn't think Daniel would be... Uh, pushed back so long. Who knows? Might be playing a bit of possum. Back spinning kick there. Daniel's axe kick. I think Luke is looking back there. See if he can find the time from one of his corner people. Gee, he's very aggressive, the Lithuanian, isn't he? He's ripping in. Yeah, his techniques all over the place as well. Hitting the body. Then going low to the legs. And Daniel's just trying to hang in at the moment. A slap of the hand away. That elbow, I tell you, that's going to hurt. It's coming right down his collarbone there, Peter. Yeah, uh, you smash that collarbone with an elbow. Of course, you're allowed to throw elbows in Kilkshin. Uh, you're just not allowed to throw them to the face. Not so many people do it, but when they do do it and can do it effectively on the inside, it'll hurt you. Oh, that's, that's, they're, they're punching hard. Yeah, hard combinations, eh? Bare knuckle as well. You, you've got to make sure you close your fist too because you'll hurt your hands if you hit an elbow. Determination in Daniel's face there. Look at him, trying to push him off. Let Look him. at him. Yeah. Give it to him. Hear the crowd get me on him. He's looking his opponent fairly and squarely in the eye too. Oh yeah, Lucas knows it too. Is that L? Oh. Oh. Now he's starting to pick it up. Look at that. Oh. He's going to drive him back. Daniel try for that axe kick. Oh, and a sweep. Won't score. But it, it's a demoralizing. You have to pick yourself up with the ground. Lucas has that front leg, left leg standing out. He's just chasing him down now. Just too much. Just driving over the top. That's where that weight advantage is coming to advantage. This is, this massively is there. Oh. Big knee. Close, but no banana, though. No. <laughs> 
you'd have to think that Lucas has done enough to get the result there. Yeah, I hate to say it. He really has done enough there. Yeah, I hate to say it too, but I think he has. He's worked hard. I mean, they've both worked hard, but Lucas does deserve to win it. And I think the uh, referees will indicate as they have. Daniel's disappointed, though. Yeah, he is. But he'll look, he'll get to fight another occasion today to fight off for third place. Yeah, he's got another bout coming up. He's got to go out the back and sit down and wait for another one. That in itself can't be easy. It'd be flat, he'd be disappointed, he'd yeah. be hurting, but you've got to get yourself up off the canvas and go again. That's right, and it, it is only a short period of time. When I say off the canvas, Ooh. I mean off the mat. Off the mat. That elbow right down on the collarbone. If Lucas just jumped a little high there, it looked like he could have actually hit him with that knee. Let's go down to Rick. Yeah, here we go. First of all, I want to thank Daniel and all the three and my